hey, hey, do you want to buy some land, but you have no idea what the hell to do? Like, what about water? And what about septic? And do you need electricity? And can you even build what you want to build? Can you actually even put what you want to put on the land? Listen, I got you. I'm Haley Jones. Let's talk about it. All right, so this may sound dumb, but let's just start with the very first question. What exactly are you wanting to do with the land? And you may be like, Haley, I want to put something on it. Okay, but hear, hear me out. It matters what exactly you want to do because that's going to determine what kind of restrictions or not you need. So one of the very first things we want to talk about is what kind of restrictions are in place. When I think about restrictions, I think about them on four different levels. Level number one is the most simple. Is there an HOA, Homeowners Association? Um, and some people will say, well, there's an HOP, Homeowners, I don't know, a POA, Property Owners Association, whatever. So that's the number one thing. If there is an HOA, a POA, or whatever, your mo that's going to probably be your most restrictive um, things that you can do. And this is going to dictate things like what size house you can build. Um, you know, it's going to dictate how, what the front facade might look like, like all kinds of different things. So you, and you're going to have to get your plans approved through that HOA or POA. However, comma, the good thing about an HOA is that most likely utilities are already in place at the very least electricity and water are going to be available. So you're not gonna have to worry about those things. Okay, level number two is the property within a city limit. If it's within a city limit, you have some pros, you're gonna have trash service most likely, you're gonna have all, you're gonna have more amenities per se. However, you have more restrictions about like what kind of animals you can have. Again, what can you build? Um, just kind of different things about what you can actually do with and on the land. So that would be number two restriction to look in now. Number three is at the county level. So for example, in Knoxville, we have Knoxville City and then we have Knox County. Knoxville sits right in Knox County. However, you can buy a house in Knoxville and be in the county, which means you have a lot less restrictions, a lot less like, a lot less restrictions on zoning. So let's go back for a second. For example, Sevier County. You might buy some land that's zoned R1 in Sevier County, which is going to be in Sevier, Sevierville, like within the city, which is going to be super restrictive. But if you go out in the county, it's not really um, regulated. And so you can do a lot more, even though it's technically the same zoning, but it's out in the county. So you have more options. So essentially, if you are looking for land where you can do recreational type stuff, whatever kind of things you want to do, have animals, whatever, you're going to want to be in the county, not within the city limits. Okay, and number four, you want to make sure there are no deed restrictions on the property. The most common deed restriction I see is saying, for example, like you cannot put a double wide on the property. So you're going to want to make sure, even if it's out in the county, that there are no deed restrictions on that property. And the way you do that is you call the title company and the title company, any title company within that county can check for you. And it should be, if it's a listed property, it should be in that listing if there's a deed restriction, but just make sure to double check that. Let's talk about clearing it. Now, if it's cleared, you have a lot less work to do. If it's not cleared, good luck to your life. I'm just kidding, not really. But I mean, it's gonna be some effort. So if you um, are thinking that you're gonna be building on the land, it's a different type of clearing. So yeah, you can have trees removed, but then if you're wanting to actually put an actual structure where there's gonna be a foundation, that's a more extensive form of clearing. So. You're gonna to wanna to check with the county that you're interested in buying or building on and see what permits apply and are needed. If you get with a great general contractor, your general contractor is gonna know what to do. Now, if you're doing the work yourself, you're gonna to have to go digging a little bit. So note that a cost for the construction prep site is going to be more pricey than simply clearing the land. And another pl great place to get a quote is from like a local tree service, like a bigger tree removal service. They will do, they have a clearing service most often. All right. Next up is electricity. Electric service or utility is gonna be your cheapest utility that you're gonna add on a land. Now, if you're within an HOA, it's probably already available, but if you're really super rural and it's a random piece of land, it's something that you're gonna to have to connect. You will need to get your county to basically, you apply for the permit, they come out, they install it. It's roughly a couple hundred dollars depending on the specific county that you're looking at. And a lot of listings you're gonna see on the MLS that are listed on Realtor or with your agent, are gonna say that electricity is available. And sometimes that simply means that it's at the road. So you're still gonna have to get it 
connected to whatever you're building. Um, and for, for example, this has a 200 amp power pole on this property that he had installed, the seller, my seller had installed. So that's a definite like hurdle jumped in terms of something that you don't have to do, which would be ideal if you could find land with that. But if it doesn't have electricity to me, that doesn't make it a no-go. That's just a couple hundred dollar fix.